In this video, I'll share with you 12 of my very best watercolor painting tips. Let's go right to it. Tip number one, use quality paints. I see too many beginning artists use a cheap brand of watercolor paint, a lower quality brand of watercolor paint, and expect to get good results. While it's good to try to save money, when it comes to painting, you want to spend a couple extra bucks and get a quality set, like this one by Windsor & Newton. These are Cotman Cake Watercolors. They're also available as two paints. Cotman Watercolors are just a few dollars more than some of those cheap brands, and you'll see professional results from them. Tip number two, use the right paper. Watercolor paper needs to be water absorbent, of course, because you're going to layer multiple washes of color. Look for watercolor paper that's at least 140 pounds in weight, and this refers to the weight of a ream of paper or 500 sheets. Watercolor paper, of course, is available as individual sheets, and you can look for the watermark here. You can kind of see the watermark in the paper I'm showing you here. Avoid paper that's very weak, like this paper, which is only 108 pounds. This paper is going to be very flimsy and weak, and once you start applying washes to the surface, you'll notice that it will buckle, just like if you were painting on drawing paper. Tip number three, stretch your watercolor paper. Just like with painting on a canvas, we want to make sure that the paper surface is nice and taut. For larger sheets, this may mean soaking it in a bath of water first and then adhering it to a hard board, but for smaller sheets, you may just apply masking tape and then apply a layer of water. Allowing the surface to dry completely, this will make the paper better suited for applying washes. Tip number four, draw lightly. Of course, it's common practice to lightly sketch out the composition before any painting begins in a watercolor painting. While some artists don't mind the graphite marks showing through the watercolor painting, others prefer to cover up the graphite completely with watercolor applications. For this reason, use a pencil that's right in the middle of the graphite grade range. I prefer to use an HP pencil for this because it's not so hard that it will make indentations on the surface, but it's not so dark that it will allow the graphite marks to show through my watercolor applications. Of course, you can always gently lift graphite material from the surface using a kneaded eraser before painting begins, but once watercolor has been applied to the surface, it's virtually impossible to remove the graphite. Tip number five, use the right paintbrush. Of course, there are a variety of different paintbrushes available for the watercolor artist. I prefer to use synthetic brushes, which are stiff enough to give me a lot of control, but still are able to carry a lot of the water and makes applications a little bit easier. Of course, there's a variety of animal hairs as well as synthetic hairs that are available to people. I would avoid using stiffer brushes like bristle brushes unless you're trying to create specific textural effects. Tip number six, loosen up. You don't have to describe everything to a perfect level of detail when watercolor painting. You can allow shapes of value and color to imply the specific object that you're painting. Also, the vehicle for watercolor painting, of course, is water, and water's going to want to bleed and move around on the surface. Let this happen because this is what leads to the attractive nature of watercolor paintings. So loosen up, allow your marks to be a bit more free, experiment, and let the water take over in certain circumstances. Tip number seven, limit your color palette. Consider color theory and limit the number of colors that you use in your painting. You don't have to use every color that's available to you. Consider using a complementary scheme or consider using an analogous or a monochromatic scheme in your painting so that your painting is harmonized. You can also use different colors to affect shadow and highlight to create additional contrast, but limit your color palette. You don't have to use every color. Tip number eight, layer your washes. With watercolor painting, you want to think about gradually building up the value range and gradually developing the colors as you go. For this reason, you'll start with lighter washes and progressively get darker and heavier with your applications. This may mean that you're slowly applying translucent applications over the top of areas that you've already applied color. By doing this, you're going to create more depth in your color, you're going to have more control on the resulting image that you create, and your image is just going to look more natural and more representational. So start with light washes and progressively get heavier and darker as you go. Tip number nine, use masking fluid. Masking fluid is basically a material that you can put on the surface of the paper that will protect certain areas of the paper from watercolor washes. In this case, I've applied masking fluid to the trees on the left. 
This allows me to create washes right over the top of those areas, including the background and some of the shadows underneath the tree. When I'm ready, I can remove the masking fluid and create details. Tip number 10, develop a full range of value. Value, of course, is the darkness or lightness of a color. It's basically how we understand the form of objects, the light within the scene, and the textures on the subject. It's important to create a full range, meaning that we have the darkest darks, the lightest lights, and a full range of midtones in between. So as you're progressively developing the values in the scene, make sure that you're developing a full range of value so that this information is easily understood by your viewer. Tip number 11, know when to stop. It's easy to overwork any type of drawing or any type of painting that you create. But with watercolor painting, it's especially important that you know when to stop. When you start asking yourself, what more can I add? That's probably a good sign that it's time to stop painting. With watercolor painting, you don't have to describe everything completely. In this case, I'm allowing a lot of the background to be implied rather than describing it completely. Tip number 12, practice, practice, and then practice. Practice is important for developing any skill, and painting, just like drawing, is a skill that can be learned and developed by anyone, but it does require the desire to practice and then the commitment to practice. The more that you paint, the more that your confidence will soar, and with more confidence, you'll find that your paintings improve dramatically. If you'd like to learn more about watercolor painting, why not check out the Watercolor Workshop? The Watercolor Workshop is a complete course designed for absolute beginners. In this course, we cover materials and tools, including specific brush types and surfaces. We take a look at multiple application techniques and color theory. We look at several different compositional strategies that you can apply to your own work. We take a look at painting loosely with watercolor, and we cover a variety of different subjects, including landscape painting, cityscape painting, and portrait painting. We also cover several derivatives of watercolor painting, including watercolor pencils, mixing media, and opaque watercolor, commonly referred to as gouache. Now, of course, everyone doesn't learn by just watching videos, so ebooks are included with each of the modules. There are over four hours of video instruction included, all encompassed in 19 modules that include 18 ebooks that you can download and use along with the videos. So if you're ready to learn more about watercolor painting and start painting with confidence, check out the Watercolor Workshop today.